before I get into the story of coed therapeutics, I'm going to mention a few names, and you're going to wonder why am I mentioning those names. Eric Dane, the famous actor, Stephen Hawkins, the famous neurophysicist, Ronald Reagan, our former president, and Bruce Willis, the famous famous for Die Hard movies. What do these people have in common with Koya? What they have in common with Koya is our vision. We want to make the story of these people about their accomplishments in their career, their family accomplishments, or whatever else the story they may have in their lives. We do not want their stories to be defined by the diseases that they have either are continuing to live with or have lived with. Eric Dane, Stephen Hawkins, two people with ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease, it's a devastating disease where the average lifespan of patients is between three to four years after diagnosis. Frontotemporal dementia, a disease Bruce Willis was diagnosed with, is another extremely progressive disease that affects cognitive function and again shortens the lifespan of many of these patients. Alzheimer's disease that our former president Ronald Reagan suffered with towards the end of his days is another devastating disease that is not only a disease of the patient, but is also a disease of the family and the caregiver. Our vision and dream at COYA is to make these diseases manageable diseases where not only these celebrities, but all patients suffering from these diseases can move on with their lives with the disease in the background and the disease not controlling their lives. At COYA, we believe that Tregs are pivotal in addressing neuroinflammation. This is because Tregs are also known as regulatory T cells. They regulate or they kind of act as the brakes of the immune system. So they keep the T cells from going, uh, going out of control and attacking healthy neurons or nerve cells. And this happens, this creates an inflammatory status and we have seen compelling data that in patients with Treg dysfunction, the disease progression is faster, and there's a direct correlation between disease progression in diseases like ALS, FTD, and the Treg dysfunction. So fundamentally, at Koya, we believe in converting dysfunctional Tregs to being functional and keeping them that way. The science behind our investigational COYA 302 is a dual mechanism. At the core of it is we want to reduce the bad Tregs, which are the dysfunctional Tregs, and convert them to being good, which is functional Tregs, and also keep them in a good state or keep them in a functional state. And that's what COYA 302 fundamentally does. How do we do that? COYA 302 is a combination of a low-dose interleukin-2 and a CTLA-4. And this is a proprietary combination. The low-dose interleukin-2 increases the Treg numbers and function, therefore increasing the good guys. And the CTLA-4 keeps the overall macro environment less inflammatory by acting on a different aspect of the immune system, acting on the macrophages, acting on the activated myeloid cells. And the combination essentially allows for the Tregs to not only become functional and stay good, but stay functional and good for a long period of time. And that is the key differentiator in the approach that COYA takes to these diseases compared to many of the approaches out there. At COYA, we believe that ALS and FTD are the right targets to address at this time. There's multiple reasons behind this. Number one, ALS and FTD are diseases with high unmet need. ALS has a couple of therapies approved on the market, but despite those therapies being available, 
ALS patients continue to decline and the average ALS patient dies within three to four years. Frontotemporal dementia or FTD has no approved therapies and therefore a very high unmet need. And this high unmet need also provides with a regulatory flexibility with these diseases with the path to approvability being uh, more efficient because the regulatory bodies, both the FDA and the world regulatory bodies, want to see options being available for these patients. So there's a more efficient path to the market as well with these diseases. In addition to that, our scientific foundation is to target regulatory T cells and address the dysfunction of these T cells. By doing so, we address at the core neuroinflammation and both ALS and FTD are highly inflammatory diseases and these patients tend to have a high degree of dysfunctional T-regs. So the combination of the unmet need, the regulatory pathway, and our scientific approach, which aligns well with the disease progression of these diseases, we believe makes us a strong candidate to bring new candidates to address ALS and FTD. Koya has built meaningful strategic partnerships, such as the ones we have with Dr. Reddy's, the ones we have with Houston Methodist, and also the strategic investment from Alzheimer's Drug Discovery Foundation. The Dr. Reddy's partnership, Dr. Reddy's is a multinational company, is for commercial rights to ALS, one of the indications of COYA 302. COYA retains the rights for all other indications, including ALS rights in Japan, South America, and Mexico. What this partnership brings to the table, obviously one of the obvious ones is that it brings us a steady stream of non-dilutive uh, cash flow, or at least line of sight to it, provided we meet our milestones. But more importantly, it brings to us the value of a strong pharmaceutical company such as Dr. Reddy's with a depth of expertise in manufacturing, commercialization, and regulatory pathways, and that we leverage those synergies so we can together more efficiently advance this program and hopefully bring better options to patients suffering from diseases like ALS. Our partnership with ADDF is a very important scientific one. Their investment directly supports our progress of clinical trial in patients with frontotemporal dementia and the collaboration strengthens our clinical protocol and the path forward. Similarly, our partner partnership with Houston Methodist is core to the scientific progress we have made at COYA and we will continue to make it COYA because the fundamentals of the science are technologies that come from Dr. Stanley Appel's laboratories in Houston Methodist. So what we have done well at COYA is to understand what we do well and understand areas where a partnership truly enhances the synergies and makes the outcome better than some of the individual parts. And that is what we have uh, pride ourselves in with these partnerships. Some upcoming milestones that COYA investors should be watching for in 2025 are, number one, we just recently announced that we have submitted the IND to support the initiation of a potentially pivotal phase 2B study in patients with ALS. In the upcoming weeks, we anticipate hearing the feedback from the FDA and assuming a green light, we plan to initiate this trial later this year. So that'll be a very key milestone for COYA. This milestone also triggers a milestone payment of 4.2 million upon the IND approval and an additional 4.2 million upon the initiation of the first dose in these patients from our strategic partner, 
Dr. Reddy's, and these milestone payments are non-dilutive milestone payments as part of our strategic partnership with them. In addition to the advance in ALS that we are really excited about, we also intend to share later this year additional data from the ongoing investigator-initiated trial in frontotemporal dementia. We had previously reported interim data in this study, from this study. In addition to that, our program COYA 303, which is a proprietary combination of our COYA 301, the low-dose interleukin-2 with GLP-1 agonists, the popular weight loss drugs such as Ozempic and Wegovi, we will have additional preclinical data, hopefully showing continued synergy of this combination in neurodegenerative models. We had previously shown data in in vitro models showing that this combination has great potential in diseases like Alzheimer's disease. This also opens up the potential for future business development opportunities, and we will continue to vigorously pursue those business development opportunities. opportunities. And finally, we anticipate having additional biomarker data in Alzheimer's disease, as well as in ALS, and we will be publishing these in the appropriate, at the appropriate time in the right journals. In addition to that, we plan and intend to submit towards the end of this year an IND to support the initiation of a phase two study in frontotemporal dementia with the intent of initiating this trial in the first half of 2026. So lots of interesting and exciting milestones on a weekly and monthly basis that we anticipate uh, achieving at COYA from now through the end of 2025 and beyond.